Hi guys, welcome to Just Be Used Bible Study for the month of April. And this month we are going to focus on not letting the crowd get to us. Our focus chapter is going to be in John chapter 2 and chapter 6. And this really is for people who um, know that God has purposed something in their life and they're having difficulties in making decisions concerning this purpose because of the people around them. And understand that throughout the session, I'm going to refer a lot to the crowd. And the crowd doesn't necessarily mean a big mob of people. However, it could just mean your family, your friends, people who are close to you, people you look up to. The crowd could be social media, um, the followers that you have on social media. So this in this session will be your crowd. Um, before we start, I'm just going to start off with a prayer. Allow God to, you know, be in, in the midst of this discussion and, you know, allow us to settle our minds. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. And I bless your name, Father God, because you are great. You are the almighty Father. You are the beginning and the end, Father God. You've created us. You have purposed in us something great. And dear God, you're asking us, dear God, to start and, and go forward in what you have purposed in our lives. So we come before you as we discuss this and we ask for your guidance. We ask that, dear God, that you will remove all distractions and allow us to focus on what you're trying to say to us today. I thank you, Father God, for your anointing. I thank you for your grace and your mercies upon our lives. And I pray, dear God, that we will continue to focus on you. May your eyes continuously be on you, dear God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So last month, I studied the book of John. And it was so awesome to me how Jesus dealt with the crowd. Now, we're going to read in John chapter 2, verses 23 to 25. And it says, because of the miraculous signs he did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, many people were convinced that he was indeed the Messiah. But Jesus didn't trust them because he knew what people were like. No one needed to tell him about human nature. And I found his reaction to everybody to be really, really cool. Because this situation could be very much compared to a lot of things that we're facing right now in 2015 during that time when i read this verse i could just imagine how jesus had just started doing his thing for god all along he was you know prepping and now was his time to carry out his purpose and a lot of us feel like now is our time to do what we have to do and jesus did you know that miracle that was turning water into wine at that wedding and you know the word went out everybody knew what was going on you know people knew that jesus did that miracle and everybody was praising him at that point in time everybody was all over him jesus was just like you know i'm not gonna let the crowd get to me and it was so easy for us nowadays to let the crowd get to us that we feel like we have support that you know people are listening to what we're trying to say then we use that sometimes for validation we sometimes use the support that we get from the crowd from our family or friends as validation for okay probably i am called to do that and we need to focus on the fact that jesus didn't say you know what the crowd is cheering me on so probably i really am the messiah or the, the crowd is trained me on and yeah probably God really is with me no he already knew before he even started doing what he had to do that this is exactly what God was calling him to do so at that point he already checked with his father he already got validation from God so going forward people giving him praise didn't even get to him and it's the same way even if we're, we're on the other line where you know People are not giving us validation. People are not giving us praise. People are not recognizing our work as we would like them to. Because we understand that a lot of us put a lot of work into our ministries and sometimes we're just not getting the feedback that we want. And God is telling you, why are you looking for others' validation in order for you to do what I asked you to do? It is not about if Jack, Tom, or Henry understands or hears the word and and follow you it's about me and you making sure that what you're doing is in line with my will for you 
so in that verse we can get so many lessons and one of which is do not live for the validation of the crowd because if at all you live for it you will die for their for when they reject you and that this takes us to another part of, of the reading where jesus said no one has to tell me the nature of man i know what men are like i know what your heart is like and he understood that one day the crowd is with you everybody's cheering you on and the next minute they turn around and bash you they turn around and stab you they turn around the same people that praise you the same people you will throw the stones at you stones of judgment on you the same exact people and sometimes that happens within a matter of minutes and you wonder but wait you were you were cheering me on you were with me all along and all of a sudden somebody came and said something and you just flipped over and Jesus is telling you that's human nature that's how they are they'll be your friends today and the next minute they act like they don't even know you so this is the reason why you have to not focus on what people have to say about you how people are taking your ministry how people are taking how you live your life sometimes honestly the only validation that you have to look for is the validation that you get in Christ in God ensure that what you're doing check with the father is this what God wants me to do and if you don't understand you're not sure go before the Lord until you feel until he shows you say Lord I need to know I don't know what I have to do I am hearing all kinds of things and you need to shut everybody else that is talking in your head whether it be your mother that's telling you no don't go into ministry you need to go finish your school sometimes God will let you go to school and then after you go to school or you go to med school he would tell you go to Africa and volunteer and that would have been your purpose and you're like well I spent all this money going to med school and now I have to go to Africa and volunteer you have to be able to be okay with God what God has told you to do if God is telling you to go that direction then go that direction and of course everybody is gonna have an uproar everybody has an opinion and people will always have opinions but at the end of the day are you going to live your life based on what people think and there was one point before I went into ministry I was kind of confused I was like but what if like there was a situation hypothetically speaking I was talking to God hypothetically and I was just like how do I figure out what direction you want me to go if I have you know a lot of people telling me to go to this direction what how do I figure this out and around that time of course I was still depending on the support of people to validate what I was doing in the Lord and God just simply said to me who is giving you the purpose who is the person who gave you and told you what you have to do it's me why are you going to listen to what other people have to say take into account of what other people have to say over what I am telling you if at all the person is speaking according to what I want you to do you will know I will give you confirmation but whenever you are in a, a, a situation where you feel like you're your parents is telling you one thing but God is telling you another thing like I said to a young lady not too long ago your loyalty has priority and the priority of your loyalty is God that's who you give your loyalty first and foremost not your parents not your family and not your friends that have been friends with you for over 25 years it doesn't matter how long you've been friends with that person you put God first in your life that's what putting God first is is it, that's what it means it means that you put your loyalty towards God first and understand that sometimes you're gonna walk alone sometimes not everybody is going to be on board with what you're doing and you have to be okay with that you have to be okay with that and so Jesus was you know totally unbothered by the crowd he was totally unmoved him he he got the praise and he was just like, you know what, I'm not going to let it get to my head. That day he got lots of followers, he got lots of likes because he did something that people thought was worthy of praise. And he was like, I'm not going to allow that thing that I did to say who I am. Which was very crazy. It's, a, it, it's very crazy because a lot of us use what we do to dictate who we are. And who you are is independent of what you have done. And that goes good and bad if you've done bad things doesn't mean that you are a bad person 
if you've done great things the great things that you have done doesn't define who you are and God was um, Jesus was not going to allow the miracle that he did to validate the fact that he was the son of God that's something he already knew he knew he, who he was what he did he was not going to use it to validate who he was he, he knew who he was and you have to know who you are and before you even think about going into ministry it's very very important that you know who you are because if you don't I'm telling you the crowd will have a grand time with you or the lack of crowd you are gonna start questioning because you're not sure know who you are so that the validation of the crowd doesn't even touch you you don't even look for it because you know what you're doing is in line with what God wants you to do and at the end of the day if your ministry is out there to touch only five people and you'll be okay with that because that is what God wants you to do not everybody gets a big stage and big lighting and some people really just have to do have their ministry at their workplace probably bring a few probably two people to Christ and probably that that is your ministry but know what you what you are in Christ know who you are first and then also always check with him as far as how you go about doing what you have to do so we have that situation where Jesus showed you know that he was not going to be moved by the crowd he was not going to allow the crowd to pull him one way and pull him the other way. When the crowd is all happy and hype, he feels good. But when the crowd is against him, then he's going to start feeling depressed because he's causing the crowd to validate him, to, to show him what he's worth. And he's showing us now. You don't let the crowd get to you because human nature, the way they are, their emotions run with the wind. And if they feel happy, they're all over you. If they're not happy, it's like whatever. And then you can allow that to get to you. So if we go further, when we go to John, John 6, 15. Now in that passage of scripture, if you read the entire chapter, you can do it after the session. Um, this is where Jesus had a multitude of followers. They were in the wilderness and they were hungry. And Jesus performed the miracle where with the um, two fishes and five loaves of bread. But he was able to feed 5,000 people with that. And when that was done, the crowd couldn't get enough of him. The crowd went wild when they understood that Jesus was able to feed all of us with just these five loaves of bread and two fish. And at that point, in, chap in verse 15, we see Jesus walked away from the crowd because he realized that they were going to try to make him their king. And it was amazing. Because today, when we see other people that we have following us, then we're going to start to feel like, okay, the person, people try to put us up there. Or whatever pedestal that they try to put us on. We will gladly go sit on that pedestal because we will be like, I earned it. I did that. So... If the people want to reward me with such a title, I will take it. But Jesus stayed in the will of his father. He stayed there. He didn't allow the fact that the crowd was going, literally going wild. Want him to show, he wanted to show him with gifts and titles. He walked away from all of that and he was like, no. This is not what I came here for. I came here a king already. You're not going to make me a king. I am already the king. You're not going to make me anything. My father put me in that position, independent of you. So I'm not going to allow the crowd to tell me who I am. And there we see it again. People try to pin things on you based on what you've done. And that goes bad and good. When you've done something bad, people try to make you, okay, put you as that bad person. And when you've done something good, then people try to pin that title on you. And it's okay to be happy when the crowd praises you, but you need to understand that your head needs to stay leveled. Yes, they're happy, but I have to understand what I've came here to do. We can't afford to walk away and, and follow the crowd or the lack of crowd and you know use that to to tell us what we're supposed to be God God is asking that we stay connected with him 
as Jesus was always connected, Jesus knew what he was about. He knew what God had sent him to do. And he knew that having people put him in a position wasn't what he was here for. He wasn't going to make anybody make him anything. Don't make anybody make you anything. Check with your father. God, is that what you want me to do? God, is this where you want me to go? Ask him to, to confirm. I usually tell God, you know what, if I'm not sure about something, I will speak to him about it. And if he's not responding, why I'm missing the... I am, I am missing the signs or the confirmations. I would tell him, Lord, speak louder. Scream if you have to. Use billboards or anything. But confirm to me that what I am going to do is what you want me to do. Because I am not doing this of me. And before I started this ministry, I was very undecisive about some things. And I was just like, you know what? This is not mine. This ministry ain't mine. So, you know what? God, you do you. I'm going to wait you show me where I need to go I'm not moving unless you tell me where I need to go and some of us need to do that don't sit here and rush the process don't rush God if he's not saying anything sit here and wait till he says something because eventually he's gonna open his mouth he's gonna say something to you and sometimes what he's saying is not exactly what you got the first time so we need to stay connected ask for confirmations if you're not sure don't go ahead trying to say, you know what, I think that's what God wants me to know. Make sure you know. Because if you go out there not knowing, I am telling you, people are going to take you and send you all kinds of places. And then you're gonna, not going to be able to fulfill the will that God has placed in your life because you are all over the place with the crowd. You will have your family who will tell you one thing. And God is telling you another. And you have to know where your loyalty lies first. Your loyalty is in Christ. You don't go with what your mother or your father says. When you know for a fact that that's not where God is sending me. Sometimes you would have to walk away from them. And, and fulfill what God is telling you to do. And at the end of the day, God will deal with their heart and deal with them. And it will come to a point where they will understand. But you cannot cause that your lack of support from them to deter you from doing what you have to do. Yes, the whole world may feel like you have to do things in a certain order. Sometimes you feel like you have to grow up, go to school, get your career, get a husband, get your children, and you think your life is set. And that's what society is telling us. That is what, you know, sometimes even our family wants to go according to that that pattern of life and probably this is not your pattern probably you going to college is probably not what god is telling you to do maybe after you come out from college god is saying you know it's not time to start working yet it's time to go volunteer somewhere or after you've gotten your career god is saying you know i'm not sending you to get married right now and then you'll have your family in your head like okay when are you gonna get a husband like my grandmother, <laughs> she, she wants me to, are you going to make a kid before I die? Are you going to get a husband before I die? Um, probably not, actually. Probably I will not get a husband before you die. Probably I won't have kids before you die. Because at the end of the day, I feel like I'm going according to what God wants for me. And if my, my life consists of me not being married, I'm okay with that. Because what is the point of me going to get married because everybody wants me to get married? And, and then I go into a marriage and be in a living hell with somebody that I probably wasn't supposed to marry or probably wasn't supposed to marry yet. So all of these things we have to take into consideration when we're making decisions for our life. It's not about what the crowd says. It's not about what everybody else wants. Because at the end of the day, you're the one who's going to deal with the decisions that you've made. And if those decisions are not in line with your purpose that God has, has instilled in you, then you're going to find yourself in a lot of problems. So, probably you're not meant to be married yet. Probably you need to focus on what you can do for God. What is your ministry? Whatever the case may be, 
whether or not you're considering going back to school or getting your PhD or your masters, probably God is telling you no, that is not this is not the path that I have for you. Yes, it would be ideal in our society to do that. But if God is telling you I've created you for a purpose and your purpose does not include going back to school or getting that degree or your purpose does not include marriage or your purpose does not include having a child right now or ever you need to be able to be okay with that because if you're not okay with it then you're gonna end up doing stuff and making decisions and not walking in God's perfect will for you and then there are repercussions to that there are things that you can save yourself from some of us are so hell-bent on being in a relationship. And I have another session that I'm going to have concerning, you know, singleness. But that is for another time. But and in, in going with what we're talking about tonight, we sometimes feel like we have to do certain things. We have to be in a relationship. Okay, I'm done with school now. I can focus on having a relationship and having a marriage. And no, you have to focus on what God is telling you to do. What God has for you. It's not about what you think you need to be doing right now. It's not about what your family told you you need to be doing right now. It's not about what everybody is doing right now. Because everybody is running that race. But you have to make sure that you're running at a pace that God is telling you to run. You're not running ahead of God. Because when you run ahead of God, then you're going to run yourself into a rut. You're going to run yourself into a place where you're going to wonder why and how did I get myself there. And then you're going to have to run back to that same God you were trying to run ahead of and tell him, you know what, we need to figure this out. And that's okay, he will figure it out for you. But you need to at least try to prevent yourself from going in that situation and walking according to God's will for you. It's not about your will for yourself. It's not about you what you want. It's what about it's all about what God wants for you. And if you can focus on that, for those going into ministry, you need to understand that it's not about what pulls the crowd. Because sometimes you're going to have to do things that the majority of people will not like. But that's the thing with not watering down God's word. There are certain topics that people don't like to talk about. There are certain topics that if you talk about majority of the time, like for instance, if you talk about relationships, I've realized that for sure. That whenever you talk about relationships, everybody is all over it. But when it's time to talk about something else, then not much people are into that because they don't want to hear certain things. They want to, you know, deal with, maybe they're dealing with certain things in their life right now that they're not ready to get on board with God on. And when you talk about it, then it's like, I don't want to hear that right now. Sometimes people will support you only when it benefits them. And you also have to take that into consideration. Um, just like in John six fifteen, when you see Jesus walked away from the crowd, sometimes you have to know when to pull away. Sometimes you have to know when you feel like the crowd is trying to get you to do something that you just don't feel like it's sitting right. That's, that's not what God wants for you. And you have to know when to walk away from them. Not entirely just removing yourself from their lives is not what I'm saying. But you walk away from that proposal. You walk away from, from that request. When, when the people started praising Jesus and he didn't sit there and, you know, just bask in the praise of the people. Because he knew that it's not about, it wasn't, their praise wasn't about God. And you know that what we do, we have to do it all to the honor and glory of God. And it wasn't that they were praising God. It was that they were praising him for what he did. And it was really diverting from what his mission was. Because all throughout his time on earth, you would hear him say that I'm here to do my father's work. He never once took, took credit for what was being done. He always gave all the credit to his father and say that this is my father. He's the one who have given me the, the ability to do these things. He's the one who has purposed me and gifted me with these talents. It's not me. And at times, we get sucked into thinking that, you know what, this is me. I'm a good musician. 
it's all me I could sing it's me that's me doing this and we get into that me 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 type of state and this is what Jesus walked away from it's not me and you all are praising me so if you're gonna praise me then no this is not what I'm about I'm walking away from this because you're trying to get me to do something that I know my father ain't with so he walked away from that and we have to know when to pull away pull away from the people that are you know trying to get us to do things that we know is not in the will of God sometimes it's not something major like like fornication sometimes it's not even that sometimes it's just making a decision or accepting something that you know even though it is good it is not wrong but it is not what God, you, you just feel something different in your spirit. Like this, this is not the direction that God wants us to go in this ministry. And sometimes you have to put your foot down. Sometimes if you're not sure, be okay to say, I am not sure, but I have to talk to God or check with God on that matter. And go before the Lord and sit before the Lord. And in, until he tells you what he wants you to do, you sit before the Lord and you don't make a decision unless he confirms, unless he speaks unless he directs you and we need to understand how to do that before I surrendered my life to Christ it was difficult for me to do that I I was someone who liked doing things right away I was not one to just sit down and lay back about certain things so if I felt like I needed to do something my mother usually say pray about it pray about it like God takes forever to answer sometimes <laughs> And that was the, that was the mentality that I had. I'm like, prayer body, but he gonna take forever. And I ain't got forever, so I'm gonna go ahead and do what I feel was right. Of course, we always pay the consequences for doing that. Of course, so I have gone to a point where I will sit before the Lord. And I will postpone things as long as I have to postpone things until I am told when I should go about doing it. Just be you is a ministry that God gave me about a year and a half ago. A year and a half he gave me the ministry um, well he gave me the name he didn't even tell me what I was supposed to do with it and of course I could have just run with the name there was so so much that I could do with the name just be you but I was like you know what this is not me this is not my thing this is God's ministry and I refuse to just run with it any any way anyhow so over a period of months, God dropped in my spirit every once in a while, tell me a little bit more what I'm supposed to do. In the meantime, I was still working on myself as a Christian, but he still trusted me with this mission. And I refused to, to go about doing anything, starting a website or doing anything without he gave me the go ahead and the do that and not do this. Until I understood and there were some times when I was kind of stuck. I was like, okay, what do I do? Of course, I could figure it out. I could figure many things out on my own and do things on my own. But I refuse to do that. I think I have long learned my lesson <laughs> that I don't run ahead of the Father. So I would wait. Month pass, two months pass, I'll wait. I'll wait till God tells me, make that decision and do that. And when I wait, most times, you know, it feels better it feels better when you know that you're what you're doing is what the Lord is trying to tell you to do what the Lord is guiding you to do you feel better because you know you're not doing this alone when you know you're doing this alone then you become very nervous you're like oh my god I don't even know if I should be doing this but you do it anyway but when you know God is walking with you in something nobody needs to support you nobody needs to be there with you but you know you're doing this and God has something in store. So God has something in store for you. And you will hear what people have to say. People will have a lot to say. I always say people are entitled to speak their mind. And they're entitled to have their own opinions. But I'm not entitled to care about your opinions. I'm not entitled to acknowledge them. I'm not entitled to regard them. No, you're not entitled to regard anybody's opinion, whoever they may be. The only opinion that you need to regard is that opinion of God. Because that's the only one that really matters. So in conclusion tonight, I hope that you guys get some type of confirmation, 
some type of comfort, some type of encouragement in knowing that you wait on the Lord. And even though everybody around that's really close to you, people that you truly respect, is telling you to do this, but you feel like God is telling you, no, you're not ready to do that, or this is not where I want you to go, I hope that you find the strength to tell them no. To tell them, you know what, sometimes you have to walk away from them. Walk away from that proposal. Walk away from that idea. And understand that God starting a work in you, He will complete it. Sometimes you will lose people along the way. And you have to be okay with walking with the Lord all by yourself. God will send who He has to send afterwards. But take that step in trust in Him. And walking away from what people have to say. Or what people are not saying. Don't let the silence of the crowd deafen you. Just understand that you are basking in the Lord right now and you're waiting on the Lord and there's nothing wrong with doing that. There's nothing wrong in doing that. Don't get discouraged if you're not getting the support that you want. And don't get big headed if you're getting too much support that you didn't even think you would ever get. Let's continue staying in the will of the Lord. No matter what the situation is. Always, always go before the Lord. He speaks. He's not mute. He by no means is selective with who he talks to. He will speak to you. So keep trust in the Lord. I love you guys. And see you again next month or for our next session. Bye.